Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be computing quite a cool integral. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx. Now, if you look at sine of x over x and you try and find some sort of antiderivative, you're going to have quite a hard time. Um, so it doesn't seem like there's a nice way of integrating it that way. And perhaps you could try a u substitution or perhaps some sort of integration by parts. And if you try these different methods, you don't really seem to get anywhere nice. This just becomes an even uglier integral. However, today I'm going to be showing you quite a cool method to integrating this thing here. And you can use it to integrate other things, for example, cos x over x. And um, just sort of adapting this technique in general to answering a lot of integral problems where it doesn't seem like there's a nice starting point using classic techniques. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, so firstly, I guess I should point out that this function here is technically not Lebesgue integrable over naught infinity, and that's because if you look at the absolute value of this, if you put absolute value things there, so if I look at this integral instead, uh, this thing here diverges, and thus technically it's not integrable. However, what I'm technically doing is I'm just working out the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from naught to n of this thing here. But uh, for today I won't get too technical, I'm just going to leave it as so, and you can just trust me that the things that I'm doing are indeed valid. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is look at a more general function, i of t, and that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x times e to the minus tx dx. Okay, so what I have here is i of 0, because obviously if I put t equals 0 into this thing here, this thing here just becomes 1, and I'm left with the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx. So I want to know what i0 is. Okay, what I'm actually going to do, though, is differentiate i. So on the left-hand side, I just get i prime of t, so I'm differentiating both sides with respect to t. And on the right-hand side, I get ddt of this integral. Okay. But now what I'm going to do is bring this derivative inside the integral. So this becomes the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative of sine of x over x, e to the negative tx dx. And now what's quite nice is this is quite easy to differentiate with respect to t. I'm just differentiating this thing because, of course, sine of x over x is a constant with respect to t. So this becomes minus, uh, minus x times e to the minus tx. And of course, the x will cancel with this x on the denominator. So we get this thing here, let me write it in here. I'll bring the minus out front is equal to zero. The integral from zero to infinity of my, uh, sorry, sine of x e to the negative tx and dx. Just squeeze that in there. Okay, so all I've done is differentiated e to the minus tx with respect to t. That takes a minus x out, which will cancel uh, with the x there, and of course, leave a minus one out front. And then I'm left with the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x e to the minus tx dx. Now what I'm going to do is compute this integral, and thus I'll know what i prime of t is. Then I can integrate up to give me i of t plus some constant. And remember, I want to know what i is, but I showed that that was i of 0. So then I'll plug in what t uh, when t equals 0, and then I'll be able to evaluate this integral here. Okay, so I've just showed that i prime of t is this integral here, minus the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x times e to the negative t x dx. So, of course, I want to work out what this integral is. So I've written it down here as j. Now, there are a few different ways you can do this, um, perhaps by integration by parts, but my sort of favourite way is treating sine of x as the imaginary part of e to the ix. And also, what pops out of this for free is the integral of cos x times e to the negative t x dx. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is write sine of x as the real part, sorry, the imaginary part of e to the ix times e to the negative tx dx. Now, because everything here is real, I'm integrating over a, a real domain. This thing here is real. I can just take this imaginary part right outside the integral. So this is the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the ix times e to the negative tx dx. Okay, let's combine these two uh, e's together. So this is the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the i minus t of x dx. Okay, let's evaluate this thing here. We can work out the antiderivative. That's just going to be 1 over i minus t times e to the i minus tx. And that goes from infinity to 0. And of course, I've still got my imaginary part there. 
when uh, I put in x equals infinity, because t is positive, or perhaps I should have mentioned t is positive in my definition of i of t, uh, this thing here will look like e to the minus infinity, and of course that's going to go to zero, so that's great. So I only really need to worry about when x is zero, and of course this e to the zero will vanish, so I'll just be left with one. So I've got the imaginary part of minus one over i minus t, which is the imaginary part of one over t minus i. Okay, now what I'm going to do is multiply the top and bottom by the comp complex conjugate. So this is equal to the imaginary part of t plus i all over t squared plus 1. And this is precisely 1 over t squared plus 1. Okay, so I've shown that j, this integral here, is just 1 over t squared plus 1. And as I said, you could evaluate this integral in a couple of different ways. Uh, but this one here is my favourite. And of course, if you wanted to do... Um, the integral from 0 to infinity of cos x times e to the negative tx, we essentially just swap all the imaginaries for reals, because remember the real part of e to the ix is cos of x, so we just get t over t squared plus 1. Anyway, now I have what j is, I can work out what i prime of t is, it's simply minus 1 of this, and then I can work out what i of t is. Okay, so let me do that. Okay, so I just showed that i prime of t is minus 1 over t squared plus 1, now we can just integrate this to give us that i of t is minus 1 inverse tangent of t. This is a very sort of standard integral. Oh, I'm sorry, and plus a constant. But notice that how we define i of t, I've rubbed it off. Let me write it down again. We had it to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x e to the negative t x dx. Now, when we put in t goes to infinity, this thing here goes to zero, and of course this thing here is bounded. So this whole input goes to zero, so I'm just integrating zero, which is zero. So what I can do is write i of infinity equals zero. But of course when I put infinity into this thing here, inverse tangent of infinity is pi over two. So then that means that my constant is pi over two, because i of infinity is zero, but this is also minus pi over two plus this constant. And that, of course, means that the constant is pi over 2. So then that I can conclude that i of t is minus the inverse tangent of t plus pi over 2. And now remember, I wanted to know what i naught was, because when I put 0 into this thing here, I get the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx, which is precisely my i, the thing I'm trying to work out. So I just need to put 0 into this formula here. So I can conclude that i, which is equal to i naught is precisely minus the inverse tangent of 0 plus pi over 2. But of course, the inverse tangent of 0 is just 0. So this thing here is precisely pi over 2. OK, and we're done. I've shown that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx equals pi over 2. And I guess the trick to it was starting off with um, i of t, then differentiating it, and then we're getting a sort of a nicer integral. And then it turns out to be essentially um, a differential equation in terms of i prime of t. We got i prime of t equals minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. We can work out what i of t is up to a constant and then plug in t equals infinity to conclude that that constant must be pi over 2 and then plug in 0 to give us the integral that we want equals pi over 2. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you are new here please do consider subscribing. I make lots of fun maths videos like this um, to keep you entertained if you enjoy maths. Anyway, I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.